Did you know by the 1930s, the number of black schools in Fauquier County outnumbered the number of white schools in the county? There were 31 schools for black children, while there were 24 for white children. One of the 31 available schools was Routes Hill, formerly Fox Hill School. Currently located on St. Paul's Road, the school catered to students in the modern-day Lee, Opal, Virginia area. When John Fox died in 1859, his will stipulated that his slaves be freed and his property sold to buy them property in Ohio, as slaves were required to leave once free. When the Civil War ended, Fox's freed slaves returned to Virginia and sued for the Fox lands, regaining them. Reverend Leland Warren's desire to aid freedom and spread God's word brought him to Fauquier County, where he established Fox Hill School in 1866. In 1926, Fox Hill School was demolished and replaced by Routes Hill School with the help of the Rosenwald School Program founded by the Tuskegee Institute. Major financial contributors were Rosenwald, the public, and African Americans. Whites did not explicitly contribute to the $2,300 required to build the school. The school was named for Paul Route, who took out a grant on the land in 1727. In 1924, two acres of land were donated by George Fox to build the new building. Rotes Hill School, much like other Rosenwald schools, followed a preset plan drawn up by the Tuskegee Institute. A one-room school housed with long windows only on the north side, Rotes Hill was considered an elementary school ranging from kindergarten to seventh grade. Older children had a trek to Manassas for high school until Rosenwald High School was expanded in 1932 and W.C. Taylor was erected in Warrington in 1952. Black schools, unlike white schools, were very poor. Like Routes Hill, many were one-room buildings with one teacher. Members of the community were responsible for the upkeep and safety of the schoolhouse, as well as the yard where students played during their lunch breaks. Bathrooms were located outside of the schoolhouse, one for each gender. Shown here is the boys' bathroom. Water came from local springs, and heat was provided by wood-burning stoves. Wood was donated by the community. At Routes Hill, coal was added to the stove to extend the length of the fire. Leftover coal is shown here, located behind the school. Schools offered more than just reading, writing, and arithmetic. Teachers often taught skills such as sewing and cooking. Due to this, schools featured industrial rooms where sewing machines were kept. In the case of Routes Hill, girls learned to cook in the industrial room. During the day, students also kept lunches in cubby rooms near the entrance to the school. This is where often 20 to 30 students in size. Students sometimes walked up to three miles to attend the school. Typical school years began in September, immediately after Labor Day, and ended in early May. Days began at 9 and ended at 3, with an hour for lunch beginning at noon. Students who lived close often went home for lunch. The school still stands today, shown by the picture here. The original floors, roof, and chimney remain. Traditionally, stoves were centered in the schoolhouse, but in the case of Routes Hill, the stove was in the front corner. The chalkboards also remain on the walls, as well as pieces of an alphabet banner. The current owner and former student, Mr. George Sales, hopes to restore the school to its former appearance, though it is in wonderful shape compared to other one-room schoolhouses in the area. After finishing at Routes Hill, Mr. Sales began work as a farmhand before joining the Navy at 19. After retirement from the military, he married and had a son who also attended Routes Hill, but graduated from Taylor High School.